we're gonna start off this yoga class on our back and it, it is a um, core and spine strength. So we're gonna kind of warm up um, our core a little bit so it connects our upper body and our lower body. So we're gonna explore kind of moving the lower body and then moving the upper body and seeing what you can engage um, when you're here. So to come onto the back, just gently come onto your side and let's roll ourselves over onto our back. And from here, just get comfortable. Kind of check in, notice, you know, as we are checking in with our breathing, just take a few deep breaths here just to kind of check in with your energy. But notice um, your shoulder blades, how they feel on the mat. Notice your hips, you know, as one side pressing into the mat more than the other. Just take a few moments here. And you feel that your lower back is lifted off the mat and the neck, the back of the neck. So we're going to begin um, with the lower body first. So as you exhale, gently flatten your back down and don't push into your heels. Inhale, just release that. So keep going with that. Exhale, flatten the back down and see if you can feel when you do that, your ribs pull together and down and release. So just the simple movement of the hips affects the connection up here in the ribs. So core, and then we'll slowly uh, bring a flip, keep the back flat, and then bring the knees in. And just give them a little hug here, and just kind of do a little circle. And then we'll release our hands back down. And then keeping our back flat on the mat, bring your knees over your hips. So a little bit more challenging. And then bring the shins level to the ceiling. So a little bit more challenging there. So if you can feel that corset, keep that. And we're just going to do some leg circles just to kind of move the hips around a little bit. So um, we're going to take our feet and we're just going to circle, take a big, large circle. Just explore that, notice your hips. They're moving around just through doing some circles. We're gonna do three one way and then we'll switch and go the other way. So bring it back to the center and then let's circle the opposite way. Keep your neck nice and relaxed. Lower back is down. And then bring it so that your knees are here. And anytime you feel like you need to take a break, take a break. Um, but from here, we're just going to extend our legs straight up. And then keeping the lower back flat, we're just going to take our right leg out to the side. And bring it back in. And the left leg out to the side. And back in. And then let's stay on that right side. So when you bring it out to the side, don't fall over, obviously, to the right. And we're going to do three here. Notice your core. Where do you feel that? Explore the left side. Notice if one side's a little off than the other. One side's easier or more difficult. One more. Good. And then keep your legs there. We're going to bring our arms straight up, to reaching towards the ceiling. Let's take our right arm and you're going to reach your fingertips to the ceiling and the left, that right shoulder blade is going to come off your mat and then release that down. And then you're going to do the same thing with the left. So reach the left up as high up as you can and down. And then we're going to stay on the right side for three. So three. Can you feel some core work? This is a good exercise um, for strengthening your shoulder blades. And if in tabletop, um, you know, the cat cow, this is kind of what we're doing. We're doing one side. So stabilizing, working those shoulder blades. I think that was three. So let's do three on that left side. So reach it up and back. And also, the stronger your shoulder blades are, the more load your shoulders can take. And then they help kind of support the wrist. So if you have wrist problems, it might be um, behoove you to uh, stabilize your shoulder blades a little bit or work on that. So from here, we're going to tuck our chin in and we're going to lift both shoulder blades off the mat. So feel the core. And then we're just going to take our 
arms and reach to the right, a little oblique work. Bring it back to the center and reach to the left. And back to the center and to the right. And to the left. And then back to the center. We're gonna stay here, bend your knees, and then we're gonna swing our feet to the left. So like a left circle. And then you're gonna reach your hands to your feet and then back to the center and then to the right. We'll do that one more each way and then we're gonna stay on one side. So one more each way. If you, you can do this with your hands behind your head and your shoulder blades lifted. You can just be here doing the same movement. So stay here for three two, one, and then back to the center, and then three, two, and one. Back to the center, stay here if you can, and then extend your legs straight out, and just kind of walk them. So this helps for low boat, which what we'll do, we'll dress low boat when we get back, um, when we're finished with the end of class. So let's do about three more. Again, taking a break, you can just hold your legs still if you want. You can take your hands behind your head. And then lower down and release. Take a few breaths here, just kind of noticing how everything feels. And then we'll gently make our way back up um, to a seated position. So let's just bring our knees in, just kind of sway them around a little bit and then just gently roll over onto your side and then you're gonna come up into tabletop. So actually before we do that, let's just do a little wrist work. So just kind of roll the wrist around a little bit. Um, pinky to thumb, index finger, middle finger, oh, ring finger, middle finger, index finger, and then go, go reverse. So pointer finger, middle finger, ring finger, pinky finger. Take your wrists together and then gently kind of move them to the right, but let your right hand resist that move, and then the same thing. So the left, you're gonna move it to the left, but the left hand's gonna kind of resist a little bit. So just getting the wrists to wake up before we start to balance on them. So shake them out, blood flow, and then we'll come into tabletop. So from tabletop, let's just kind of warm up the whole body. So tuck the, the, the uh, toes under, and then let the belly or the rib cage just kind of drop down towards the mat. Shoulder blades come together. Shoulders are over the wrists and look up. So get a nice stretch there through those abs that we just worked. And then exhale, let's flip the toes under, tuck the tailbone under and press away. Tucking that chin in. And two more, just exploring here. And exhale round, stretch it out. And one more. And exhale round. So from here, we're gonna do tabletop uh, push-ups. So you're going to stay here and just lower to your forearms. Maybe your nose touches kind of between your hands and then press back up. So just a little, see if you can feel some back muscles working. It's a good one for um, practicing chaturangas. Notice your shoulder blades. We're going to do one more, just three of these. And then come all the way down. Walk your forearms out to a modified plank. Maybe the legs go back and just stay here for a few breaths. See if you can pull your ribs, kind of get the same feeling you did on your back. Pull your ribs together and down, like towards your hips. Flatten your lower back, which would be tucking the tailbone under. And then we'll gently release our hips into cobra. So a very active cobra here. So we're gonna take our um, forearms and then just, oh, actually, we're not doing cobra yet. We're gonna do cobra at the end, sorry. We're gonna do some oblique work. So lay down, forehead to the mat. And then we'll start with the right side. So you're gonna draw the right shoulder blade back into your spine and down, and you're gonna gently kind of rotate to the right. So you're taking your right shoulder blade to your left hip pocket and release that down. We'll do the same thing on that left side. So just notice if one side goes a little further. Feel that, so stay there for a little bit and get that feeling. And then we're gonna stay and do three on the right side. So draw up, 
and down. Squeeze your glutes while you're doing this. So some back work. So shoulder blade pulls in and down to that left hip. Release, nice and slow. Mindful movement here. And then left side, draw back and down. Notice if you rotate a little bit more one side. Bring our hands to our rib cage. Lift your shoulders so that they're level with your elbows. Pull in on your core. We're gonna press up to modify plank. So from here, lift everything up at the same time. Hold here. Take a few breaths here. See how that feels on the hands on plank. And then we'll sit back into child's pose. So maybe big toes together, knees out wide, and just gently stretch it out. Relax here, let your hips just sink down to your heels. And then we'll come back up into our tabletop for spinal balance. So actually we're gonna do Cobra if I can remember after this. So we're doing some more asymmetrical work. So we're gonna Extend and then we'll come into symmetrical stuff with Cobra. So back extension. So let's ex spinal balance. Let's extend our right leg back. Let's see how that feels. If everything's feeling okay, balance nice and strong on your right shoulder. Reach your left fingertips forward and up. Hold and breathe. Back of the head is long. So just about three breaths here, seeing how that feels. And then just lower your left hand down. And we're gonna swing our right leg around to the right. See how far you can control that and then lower it down once you get there. And then just do cat-cow. So just a cat-cow spine, explore, kind of move in through that right hip. So just tuck the tailbone under, lift the tailbone up. So when you lift the tailbone up, you probably feel more of a uh, inner thigh stretch. Notice your shoulders and your cat-cow. And then we're gonna walk our hands over to the left and swing our right foot up front. And just kind of shift a little bit back and forth in through this hip. So you're getting a stretch on the back of that right leg, not a deep one, and then a stretch on the front of your right, your left hip. And then we're gonna add a little twist here. So we'll take our left hand to the mat and then bring your right hand to your right thigh. Just see how everything's feeling. So we're gonna balance on this left shoulder. So start to rotate. If everything feels good and strong, squeeze the hip bones together, lift the right arm up. Take a nice rotation here. So again, drawing your right shoulder blade back, kind of towards your left hip, pull your ribs in. So nice, strong work here. And then we'll just reach that arm around, get a nice stretch and lower it down. Swing your right knee back under your right hip. We'll do the same thing on that left side. So extend the left leg back, hips stay parallel, float the leg up, try not to bend the knee, press the heel back. If everything feels okay, walk your right hand forward and then lift it up, spinal balance, breathe. Lower just the right hand down, and then just gently rotate the knee out, swing it out to the left, and then cat-cow. So tuck the tailbone under, and then lift the tailbone up. So a couple, just a couple of those, just notice how this left hip feels. And then we'll, once you've explored, we'll take our hands gently to the right a little bit. Swing your left foot forward, and just Sink your right hip down and just kind of move into this a little bit. Maybe shift back, stretch through that left hamstring. And then we're gonna hold, let our right hip kind of open up. 
press into your left foot and then we're going to take our left hand to our thigh balancing into the right shoulder start to rotate to the left let's see how that feels draw our shoulders down try to press that hand into the mat feel your core and then to rotate a little bit deeper lift your left hand up so your left shoulder blades drawing towards your left hip pocket that's going to pop your ribs out pull the ribs together and down so get a little corset working around your spine and then inhale and as we exhale we're going to gently lower back down come back to um, tabletop and then from here we're going to um, come down into our cobra so we'll walk our hands out or you can walk your feet back so modify plank and then gently lower all the way down hips and everything start to lift the chest up just gently draw the shoulder blades together and down and press the hands into the mat and just see how far you can lift up hold for about three breaths and then from here we're going to press so engage your core, press back up into your modified plank. And then as you exhale, let's just shift off those wrists. Let's bring our knees together and let our hands relax to our side here. Take just a deep breath here, in and out. So when you're ready, we'll bring it back into tabletop. We're going to come into um, a very easy down dog, but I, it, I want you to explore more of um, your core work. So we're going to just tuck the toes under, float the knees, and stay here. So that's kind of core, floating those knees. And then bring your attention to your shoulders. So you're going to start to press the hands to the front of the room. Rib cage comes towards your thighs and the shoulder, your hands go overhead. So this shouldn't be a lot of stress in your wrist. So you're just kind of pressing into the mat, feel all that strength in your spine. And then we'll um, slowly just press your right, your right heel towards the mat. Just a nice gentle press. See how that foot feels, the heel, your Achilles tendon, the arch, your calf. And then when you're ready, gently press both heels down. Try to keep the tailbone lifted and see how everything feels. Press into the mat. Then we're gonna take um, our hands to our feet. So kind of load those shoulders like you're walking on your shoulders, nice and strong, pushing that mat away. You're gonna bring it back to the mat and hang here in a bent-legged forward fold. You can grab your elbows if you want. Nice little inversion sway, maybe your ribs. Just check it out, see how everything feels. And then we'll look, um, take our head to the mat, hands down, walk your hands back. You're going to lower yourself into tabletop, but feel your shoulders, feel the load on your shoulders. So once you're in tabletop, we are gonna do a flow when we're standing, but I'm just gonna kind of show you guys right now um, what you're gonna need to do. When I say pivot your right heel out, it kind of looks like this. So we will just kind of do that right now. So just pivot both feet out to the side. See how your hip feels. Notice how your hip moves. Because we're gonna have that move in our flow when we come up, which is where we're heading. So we're nice and warmed up. Just check out one more side, one more time. So we'll be a pivot the foot out. Your knee internally rotates, so it's internal rotation in your hip. So we're gonna hover our knees again, plank, down dog, and then look between your hands and walk your feet forward. Now this time, feel the load in the shoulders, almost like you're doing a handstand. So just see how that feels. And then once you get to the top of your mat, fold forward. 
Grab those elbows, might stretch the wrist a little bit here. But pay attention to those parts that are bothering you for sure. Notice what feels good in them to strengthen them. And then we'll release our hands down. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen through the spine. Feel that core work. Exhale, fold. Inhale, move through our halfway lift. Squeeze the hips together. Reach the arms all the way up. Exhale, hands to our heart center and then hands to our side. So Tadasana, let's shift our weight a little bit back into the heels so that we are engaging our body a little bit more. So um, hips over the heels, pull the ribs in and down, and then tuck the chin back. Hang out in Tadasana, press into all four corners. So when you shift your weight back, can you press the balls of the feet down? Notice if one foot is more grounded than the other. Extended Tadasana. Breathe here. Reach your arms all the way up to your ears if you can. Pull the ribs in. Be nice and strong. Hands to the heart center. Tree pose on the right. So bend your right knee. Rotate your knee out. Keep your hips, left hip strong. Slide the heel to the ankle. Maybe float the toe or slide the foot to the calf. So below or above the knee, wherever you want to go. And then if you want, add the arms. you shift your weight a little bit into the heels. Add a little bit more challenge to the tree. There's a lot more different forces going through the core and the spine when you do that. And then release the hands to your heart center, back into your Tadasana. So get situated, extend the arms up. Exhale, hands to the heart center. Bend your left knee, shift into the right hip. Explore that right side. So extend, or rotate, sorry, your left knee out. Float the foot, or slide the foot to the calf, below or above the knee. Maybe add the arms. Play around with it, this is balance. So since this is core, like do a challenge. Hit, like, try to shift the weight into your heels. Notice how much your foot is working, your ankle, and all those forces are affecting your core, your hip. And then exhale, hands to the heart center. Release down. Inhale up. Exhale, chair pose. So sit back into your chair and stay here. Find a strong spine. So find a comfortable spot for your hips. Pull the ribs in and down, and take a few breaths here. Scan the body, where are you feeling this? And then inhale as we exhale, hands to the mat, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen, step back into your plank on your knees or feet. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Cobra or Up Dog. Exhale, pull the belly in, Downward Facing Dog. Take a breath here. And then look between the hands and walk the feet forward. Feel that handstand, feel that strength. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, hands to our heart center. Chair pose. We're gonna revolve. So let's bring our big toes together. Take some length into the spine here. And then on our exhale, revolve to the right. So the left elbow is gonna come either on the inside of your left knee or the outside of your right knee.
and then on your next exhale, just bring it back to the center. Inhale, bring some length into your spine. Exhale, revolve over to the left. So we're building some heat here. Low, right elbow on the inside of your right knee or outside of your left knee. Keep your hands at your heart center. Squeeze the hips, get some nice, good, strong foundation going. And then on our next exhale, we're gonna fold. Fold forward, release. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen through that spine. Exhale, step your feet back into plank. And gently lower all the way down, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Cobra or Up Dog. Explore your core, how does everything feel? Exhale, downward facing dog. And then let's just float our right foot up. Keep it nice and straight, three-legged dog. See how the back feels, a little imbalance. Rotate your right leg out just a little bit and you're just gonna float your right leg out to the side. And then bring it back to the center and do that two more times. So just a gentle float out to the side, back to the center and one more. Rotate the knee back down, look between your hands, step your right foot forward. So that's a lot of core work. It's where that handstand comes in to play. And then from here, we're gonna lengthen, lift up into our crescent lunge. So squeeze the hip bones together, sink down. Notice your breath, we're gonna hold this for a bit. So engage your core, pull the ribs together in and down. Pivot our left heel down, open the hips to the left side. Keep your right knee over your ankle. Engage your ribs. Maybe align your shoulders over your hips. Pull the ribs in. And then stay strong and grounded. We're going to inhale, reverse it. So slide your back hand down. Lift your right arm up. Get a nice stretch through your right ribs and hips. And then exhale, elbow to knee. Reach that left arm up. Don't sink into your right rotator cuff. And then this is where our, that pivot's gonna come into play. We're gonna play around a little bit here. So do some side planks and, and uh, tabletop things. <laughs> so we're gonna gently look at the, take our neck rotate it towards the mat we're going to bring our right our left heel off lower to your left knee so your hands are going to come to your mat we're going to balance on our uh, pivot your left foot out balance on your left shoulder and swing your right foot back so that you're in a modified plank and just stay here see how that feels and then we're going to bring this right hand down so that we're kind of in that tabletop. We're going to swing our right leg out to the right. See how that feels. Hold it. Maybe press into that right hand. And then swing it back up into our plank three times. So we were just kind of holding it. We're going to move with it. So take it out. Pivot that foot back. Plank. And then... Swing the foot back underneath into your tabletop, pivot the foot out, and then back to your plank. We got one more. And then from here, we're going to lower your right hand down, pivot the leg all the way around into your crescent lunge, modified lunge. And then we will um, come off of your back knee into that full lunge. So squeeze your hips. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step your right foot back into 
downward facing dog. Take a few breaths here. And then from here, we're gonna do the same thing with that left leg. So just float your left leg up. Breathe. See how that left hip feels. Get some strength, some core work. And then gently rotate the knee out and just kind of swing the left leg out a little bit. Kind of start to warm up that left hip. Two more times. One more time. Maybe going a little further. Look between your hands, press into those hands and step your left foot forward. Balance, just however you can get that left foot in front. And then when you're ready, bring yourself up into crescent lunge. So squeeze the glutes, get grounded, hold for a few breaths, pull the ribs in. So we're gonna pivot our right foot down, open up warrior two, maybe bring the shoulders over the hips, hold here for a few breaths. And then see how the body feels, we'll slide our back hand down, reach that top arm up, keep that bend in that front knee. Extended side angle, so release, squeeze the glutes, press into that right foot and draw that energy up into your right hip, your right glute, and send your right arm reaching for the, the, to the front of your mat. And then we're gonna take that right hand, we're gonna start to to rotate our torso to the mat, bring the hands to the mat, lift that back heel up and lower the heel down, the knee down. And then we're gonna continue that. So balance on your right um, arm and shift your hips back as you swing. It's kind of like you're in a tabletop. You're gonna swing your right foot back, I mean, sorry, your left, you're going to pivot your right foot back as you take your left foot back into plank. It's kind of hard to cue all that at once. So I kind of showed you the movement, but we're going to stay here. Just kind of feel this first. And then we'll bring that left hand back down and then bring your right knee kind of back in your right foot there. So it's like tabletop. Swing your left foot up, hold it here. See how that feels? Strong pull into your left or press into your left hand. And then we're gonna swing back and forth with that. So pivot your right foot up, plank. And then that tabletop extended leg. Back and forth. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, swing it around. One more. Can you get the connection in your core here? Swing your foot around. And then back into your plank and we'll step that foot forward. So we're gonna rotate our left hand back down and then just swing through that. Step your left foot forward, hold and breathe. So once you're here, we're gonna come back up off of that knee into our crest, so off your right knee, back into your crescent lunge. Take a breath here. Inhale and then exhale, hands back down to the mat. Step back into your down dog. Take a break, down dog or child's pose. Notice what feels good for you. So some sort of symmetrical rest here. Body rest, both sides are doing the same thing. And then we will look between our hands. We're just gonna shift into plank, hover your knees, 
and lower down, tabletop. And then we're just gonna swing our feet around for um, extended, or uh, to the top of the mat. You're gonna come into a seated position. We're gonna do Dandasana and kind of stretch it out a little bit here. So hands to the mat. We draw the shoulder blades down and pull the ribs in. Draw the neck so that the back of the neck is long and the chin is in. Staying here, get a nice stretch in through the back. Reach your arms up. Pull the belly and kind of hollow the belly in. Pull the ribs down. It's almost like you feel a little stretch through here. And then start to reach your arms forward. Maybe yogi toe hold. So keep the spine strong here. Not so much rounded, unless you practice this a lot and you want to go ahead and round nose to knee, you can do that. And then we will extend all the way up. We're gonna bring our knees in and take your hands kind of behind your knees. And then um, from here, you're in a nice straight spine. So feel that you're on your kind of your sits bones. Your spine's lifted. And then we're gonna do a little pelvic tilt. So tuck the tailbone under kind of pulling the ribs in and just gently lean back, get in a little, little stretch. See how that feels in your back? If this is bothersome for your back, you're just gonna stay here and explore and maybe not go that far. So come back up. We're gonna do that three, uh, two more times. So just so bring in, so it's kind of like cat spine. And then a nice extension. We're just doing it on our tailbone now. So this is prepping us for high boat, low boat, which is where we're gonna go. And then come all the way back up. So we're all at different levels. Um, if this starts to bother your back, just come back to, do, to doing this. You can even do this without the hands. See how that feels. Can you feel some strength there? Um, but don't stay back. So high boat is not with a rounded spine, it's with a lifted spine. So let's try high boat. So from here. See if you can float your feet off the mat, but keep the back, you know, in a nice strong back. So hands can stay here or they can be out. And then release that. And then low boat is when you'll go from high boat to all the way down where your shoulder blades are lifted, but your lower back's just kind of gently touching the floor. Float your knees, low boat. So those are your options. Come all the way back up. We're gonna start at the top, high boat to low boat, three times, and then we'll go into a wide straddle forward fold. So you kind of go where you feel like you wanna explore this. So we'll bring our feet parallel to the mat. High boat, low boat. High boat. Low boat, you can actually keep your legs straight in high boat if you want. High boat, ooh, that's a challenge. Low boat. And then we'll release, you can keep doing that if you want. Do about two more, do five. Go into a wide straddle forward fold. So just take those legs out wide, kind of sway a little bit side to side in the back. And then just keeping a nice neutral back, start to walk your hands forward. Now, if you can't walk forward, you have to be here. That's fine. You just want to get a stretch here in the inner thighs. So you can be here or walk forward. And take your time. So we're cooling down. So nice, slow breath. And then we'll walk our hands over to the right side. 
See how that feels. So you're trying to lay your torso over your right thigh. So notice um, where you feel that. And then walk over to the left and notice how it might be a little different. Maybe not as tight somewhere or the whole stretch could be different. And then we'll walk it back to the center. See if you can go a little further. Breathe. Walk our hands back up, bend your knees, bring them in. If the high boat, low boat bothers your back, come to your side and roll over onto your back. If you're okay, we'll just do a gentle spinal roll down. So reach your arms forward, use your abs, but you're gonna try to lay your spine down one vertebrae at a time. So tucking the tailbone under, Once you're down, reach your arms overhead. Inhale, stretch it out through your fingertips and toes. Maybe rotate your ankles around, your wrists around. And then exhale, we'll bring our hands to our side robot arms. And we'll come into a bridge. We're gonna do two bridges with our arms in different positions. So just to kind of hopefully you can come in tune um, with what muscles are working in your back when your arms are in this position and how it changes when they're in a different position. So if your shoulder blades move around differently on your back when your arms change positions, hopefully it should, to help support your rotator cuff. So see if you can feel that. So these are back muscles, spine, strong spine. So from here, press your forearms into the mat. See if you can feel that, shoulder blades into the mat. Chin in so the back of the neck is long. Notice what happens to the neck, the curve in the neck, when you flatten your lower back down. So press your lower back down, but don't lift your tailbone. I mean, don't, so you can lift your tailbone, but don't press into your heels. And then keep doing that, and just see how long you can keep lifting without pressing into your heels. And at some point, you'll have to press into your heels to lift the hips up, go up as high as you can. Really press the forearms down, kind of balancing on your shoulders shoulder blades, your neck. Keep your gaze forward up towards the ceiling. Can you tell where you can feel that in your back with your hands, your arm bones are kind of moving behind your spine into shoulder extension. Can you feel that? And then we'll release all the way down. And then we're gonna take our hands in a different position. So notice how the back felt, how that release felt. I always like to feel the roll down the spine onto the shoulders. And then we're gonna take our arms up and you're gonna, palms are facing your thighs. We're gonna bend our elbows, now palms are facing the ceiling. And you do have to have some flexibility in your wrist, but you're gonna to try to tuck your uh, fingers underneath your shoulder blades. Palms are um, on the mat and just relax here. So check in with your rotator cuff first to see how that feels. So now our hands are kind of like our arm bones are kind of like up by our ears heading into shoulder flexion. So from here, don't look at me, but just explore um, what you feel right now. We're gonna come up the same way, so just flatten your lower back. See how far you can lift your tailbone up without pressing into the heels. And then gently, you're gonna keep lifting your hips. So feel the weight kind of shift into the shoulder blades. Can you actually feel that? And then it shifts up further into your traps. And just stay there. Now with you up, your elbows might have flared out. 
bring them so that they're parallel and just notice that that's a big move in your back just bringing those arms so that they're parallel and then if you want to go further you're just, we're not going into a back bend you're just going to press your hands like a thumbprint down into the mat and just see if you got any more engagement of back muscles stay here for about three breaths and just simply explore how this feels holding these muscles engaging, strengthening our spine. And you're strengthening your glutes as well, which supports your back. So from here, again, pay attention to coming down. Feel the, sh the weight just shift down the shoulder blades, like almost giving yourself a massage, down to the middle part of your back, your ribs, slowly or lowering down, and then the lower back, all the way down and release one hand on your heart one hand on your belly feet together knees out wide close your eyes just take a few breaths here Bring our knees together and just take your right knee into your chest. Give it a little hug. Keep the chin down because you flatten your back. That changes the curve in the neck. Lower that leg down. Same thing, left leg. Gently bring it in. Give it a nice little hug. So feel that in the back. And then we'll bring both knees in, give them a little hug. And just circle around. Notice if you can feel anything different than the beginning of class. And circle the other way. And then let's bring our knees out wide. Draw them up to your shoulders. Keep the tailbone flat on the mat. You can stay here or go a little deeper, bring your feet so that they're parallel and try to grab underneath the knees. If you can reach for the insides of your feet, try that. Again, chin in. And maybe sway, see how that feels. And through the back, positioning those hips completely different. Do a rotation with our knees in. So bring your knees together and you can do whatever rotation you'd like. And we'll, we'll tee our left arm out. Pay attention to your rotator cuff. If it bothers your rotator cuff when we send our knees to the right, then bring your hand down or above, or you can just bend your elbow and place it on your ribs. So from here. Nice, slow breath in, and on your slow exhalation, just guide your knees over to the right. See if they can lower down. And you're looking to the left. And as you're here breathing into this, can you breathe into the bottom part of your left ribs? Can you feel that expand? And when you exhale, you'll feel a release. Can you try to see if you can get the ribs to head down towards your mat? And then on your next exhale, we'll bring the knees back in and do the same thing on the left side. So cradle the knees with your left hand to your right arm out. A slow breath in and as you exhale lower your knees to the left look to the right No 
notice where you feel it on this side. So engage your core as you bring your hips back to neutral, rotate your knees back to the center. So we're gonna do one more, and just, just to kind of explore and see if this stretch uh, talks to you anymore. So this time you're gonna send your knees back over towards the right, but they're not gonna go as far at all, if they'll even go. You're gonna to try to keep your bottom left rib down. So just see if you can just shift your knees to the right and keep that hip, that bottom rib down. And then, so basically your hips are rotating, your ribs staying down. How far can you shift them to the right? This hip will start to rise up, but try to keep your ribs down. So see how that feels. It's not a very large movement. That's another, not such a twist in the spine, but you know, a little, a little different stretch there into the muscles. We'll try the left side. So keeping that bottom right rib down, just draw your knees over to the left and just see how far you can go. See if, if there's a difference there. So the right uh, hip bone's gonna be coming up off of the mat a little bit. See where you feel that stretch. A little more active engagement in the body with that one. All right. So actually, before you lower your feet down, control. Notice the shift that happens in your lower back. Just control it. Almost hover. Let it happen. So we are allowing that, that curve to come in. And then let the knees rest together. Take a moment here. Maybe a big deep breath in and out just to end that practice before you begin your practice of Shavasana. So when you're ready, you can stay here or maybe extend your legs out straight. Bringing our hands to our side, and just gently closing your eyes. And just doing a little body scan, noticing how your feet feel, your ankles, your calves, your knees, your hips, your lower back, your ribs, your shoulders, your arms, your neck, and then any tension that you carry in the shoulders or in the jaws or the brow, just check in there. And let's spend these next few moments just focusing on the breathing. How does your breathing feel within the body? Notice your inhale. Is it smooth? Is it longer than the exhale? If you're pretty relaxed, the exhale should be a little bit longer. Notice the pause between the breaths. And just when the mind water wanders, notice that it's wandering and bring it back so we can give our mind a little rest as well. Take this time for your self-care.
Notice if your breathing has slowed down before you come out. Notice if the stretch or the sensations in your body have shifted. Do you feel any different after just trying to maintain this moment of stillness? And then when you're ready, on your exhale, maybe wiggle your fingertips and toes, maybe stretch it out between your fingertips and toes. Do what feels good to you, maybe placing the feet on the mat, drawing the knees in. And just take your time kind of exploring how the body feels before you roll over and gently press your way into a seated position. Noticing as you're going into your seated position how you feel. We'll bring our hands to our heart center. Just closing our eyes. Take one full breath in and out just to kind of settle in. And then on your next slow breath in, recognize that light within you. And on your next slow breath out, recognize that light in each and every one of us. Bowing our heads, namaste.